<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, I just delivered a, a group of uh, grass-fed animals. These are going to be uh, some uh, animals to process. They're just yearlings. There's, uh, I think, four heifers and two steers in there. They just turned a year old. In, uh, I guess it'll be two weeks. They'll be a year old. They're uh, three-quarter cross. They are uh, Barzona, Red Angus, and Hereford. And... Uh, I'm up here in North Missouri. I just delivered them to this young lady and she's getting started. She's got a beautiful farm here. I, the reason I'm shooting this video, I want to show people when you receive animals, we we're fortunate this lot was already here. We did beef it up, put some posts where they needed to be, added an extra strand of uh, barbed wire. And, but she's got cattle panels all the way around here. Okay, They're not going to get through that. And so I hold them as a long ways up here, rather around in the trailer, you know, half a day, whatever. And they were never been here before. They don't know where the boundaries are. And so when you unload animals, don't think you can turn them out into poly wire and, and uh, think they're not going to run through it, because they certainly will. Um, <clears throat> this uh, lady that owns this farm has got an awesome setup here. We put all the fence in. I, I'm not going to go over all that on this video. I have another video that showed that. But she's got water. There's hydrants here. There's the Job Megaflow. Once I let them out of this little pin here a little bit. Uh, she's got another hydrant <laughs> right over there. Um, there's a hydrant on the other side of the house. we got quick couplers. Drew from Anchor City Plumbing. He put in quick couplers all over this farm. And so she's got water. See, we wired this gate in here. Uh, there wasn't anything here. I found this gate in the barn. It's a good solid gate. We wired that in place. And this is what I'm going to take down. Um, I even went as far as. Ouch. That multiple rosefish got me. I just put. Uh, a chunk of wood right there it was a, a really high spot right there just enough for them to get their head under i'm like you know i'm just going to take time to do that um but i've got 12 gauge galvanized wire here top and bottom both sides i'm going to take that off i'm just going to slide this gate out of here and the cattle are going to come back in there and clean that up they're comfortable in there uh look how calm they are so I'm not going to run them out of there. I'm just going to take the gate down and walk away. Okay. Let them find the gate. But I would say within, well, they're already dog gentle. I mean, we walked around the crowd with them today, but, you know, they're not used to the surroundings. They're not used to the new owner. And it just takes a little while, folks. So when you get animals, don't expect them to be as gentle as a dog on day one. They're not going to be that way. Got to take time with your animals. Uh, a really good example of that is a fellow I did a video on a couple days ago, Tom Fisher. He sets with his cows. And he literally reached down the other day and was feeling the udder and actually trying to squeeze one of the little teats on one of his heifer. And she just, like, she just stood there. She didn't even pay any attention to him at all. So you want your animals to be gentle. They gain weight better if they're not stressed. And they don't tear up fences and stuff. They just eat, drink, lay around, ruminate, and put on weight. And they're not stressed. They're not stressed at you, and they're not stressed in their surrounding environment. But, man, we got shade. Great big old soft maples all the way down this draw. There's another big oak over there. Um, there's shade all over this paddock. So what we did, <laughs> I got to show you this. I didn't bring my postal driver. And we set up the fence the other day. I wasn't thinking, we'll get it fixed. But you know, sometimes you gotta use a little ingenuity to um, figure things out on the fly. I didn't have any tools with me. All I had was my trusty pocket knife. And uh, so what I did is I found a piece of uh, underground cable. It's got the insulation on it. And I wired it into this 
woven wire fence over here because it's non-conductive. The uh, cable is, I found. And uh, the landowner and I, I had her help me. We started clearly by that far tree, way over there, and we ran a wire, let me zoom back out, across that ditch, over to this woven wire fence, and up. Okay, I want these animals on hot wire. Now this particular paddock, it's a big one, it's a, uh, oh gosh, I bet there's 20 acres in here. Um, you can just split it up. You don't want to give them the whole 20. So we cordoned it off and gave them, I think there's about three acres here for uh, six nice grass-fed animals. This is what I did. Put my tarragate and I'll just take, now this is hot. <laughs> I don't have the tester with me. I left it over at the barn. But see, I just took the, the insulation off of that. And then I wrap this. See, once I took that off, it's cold. Now I hook it on there, and make sure your reel doesn't touch that, because that'll be conducted. And then I just went over here at my gate. See, I did. I just wrapped that cable around that high tensile wire. This is not a permanent fix. I'll come back and fix it right. But I just I was curious to see what kind of voltage I had in that poly braid. 9,700 volts. 9,700 volts. They're not going to go through that. <laughs> they do. They've got a woven wire fence here backing them up. So, anyway, it's just stuff like that. You got to figure it out sometimes. And uh, we'll get back up here and, and do it right. But I don't have the tools with me today. But this hasn't had not any animals on it for a year. Uh, the last time we were here was last summer, right after they bought it. And uh, I told her, I said, you don't have any grass. And they didn't. Um, there are some problem plants in here, but guess what? This grass is putting some pressure on the bull nettle. Some people call that horse nettle. But the grasses came up and put some pressure on it. With good grazing management, uh, you can whip that. This just needs animals on it now. Tramp. I mean, you talk about carbon. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's mature. But there's a lot of green. Look at that. A lot of green. This is where Johnny cut the dam on that pond up there and drained it. And uh, it was just a cesspit. I still get tickled when people say, well, you need to let your cows in the pond. I'm like, are you crazy? It's the best way in the world to destroy a pond is let your cows in it. That's what happened to that pond up there costs a lot of money to uh, put a V in that dam and push all that mud and crap out and fill it back in with dirt. So that, that will be pasture. Be a great place to feed some hay this winter. Unroll some hay on that and uh, you'll get some pasture. I wonder where that belt came from. Huh. Is it a broken belt? Oh, it is a broken belt. I'll be darned. See, he's got water. She got water over here, too. Look at that. Man, that's good pressure, too. I think that's where I'm going to set up my tank. I got picked. I got a hydro. I'm not used to having this much water uh, <laughs> sources to pick from. It's kind of nice, actually. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I just wanted to show you animals need to be secure they've been in this pen now let's see i got here about well one hour ago so they've been in there an hour i'm gonna open that wooden gate i'm just gonna walk back and let them find it on their own and i'm gonna move that water tank right over there that way they don't have to go up in that pen to get them a drink and you know they're gonna get watered i told the owner i said I'd tie a wire across my driveway out there and I would stop mowing this. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's out here in the country by herself. I would tie a wire across the driveway, two of them, two polys. And you mean cattle are broke to hot wire. Let them mow your yard. 
they're gonna eat that and put on two pounds a day gain they're paying you they're paying you to do it you don't have to spend diesel fuel or gasoline to run your mower just let the cows these beautiful grass-fed animals mow it for you and they'll fertilize it at the same time <laughs> Good, which is a good practice. Anyway, I got to get out of here, folks. You all have a good one. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. And uh, we'll see you all next time.